Welcome to At The Cottage with me, Chef D, where we're going to be talking to Stuart Brown, the Scotch Ambassador for Canada. Join me, won't you? Chef D, come back! So I've been waiting for this episode for a long time now. Um, we're going to take it up a whole nother level at, here at the cottage. Um, I've brought a great friend of mine, Stuart Brown from the Scotch Experience, um, and we're going to talk Scotch. A little background. Sure. Well, first of all, welcome. And, uh, nice seeing you. Good seeing you. It's so good, good to have you here. Glad to be here. Um, is that Stuart and I worked together when I was the executive chef of Weber's and you were serving and I was cooking and we kind of hit it off yep. and, and then we're on a hill, a mountain actually, in Fernie, right? Oh, that's you right. You see Fernie? That's right. And you're, you're emceeing the aerial mogul competition and I'm yes. doing the cooking for the athletes type thing. That's right. And so yeah, so we kind of hit it back and he said, hey, would you ever think about doing a scotch pairing? And I went, no, but yes. <laughs> I, again, because it's such a big flavor, and I was a little mm. bit intimidated at first about when, when Stuart first asked me. So, um, again, welcome, and you brought some different scotches with you, didn't you? I bought three different regions of Scotland mm -hmm. for you to try and pair up and mm -hmm. uh, use your ex expertise and all that Rolodex uh, recipe <laughs> cards you got going to see what you can bring together. Okay. okay because okay. we basically have a, a Lowland whiskey just out of Glasgow, and it's called Akintoshin. Akintoshin. I should have actually tried to get you to actually yeah, and, say what that is. He does this all the time it's when we do pairing dinners. Akintoshin. 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 Akintosh. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. Okay. Uh, the second one we're going to go no. to is actually out of Speyside, the most heavily populated area of Scotland for mm -hmm. scotches. And it's a wonderful uh, distillery called Cardu, which is where I got trained in. Okay. And then the final one is coming in from Isla. It's a smoky one. It's okay. going to be anything coming. There's about eight distilleries on the island mm -hmm. of Isla. And this is going to give you a little bit more oakiness, a little bit more smokiness coming underneath it. And this is really going to push your development to see where you want to go with it. So everybody, you know, mm. when they're thinking scotch, they're thinking yeah. it's peaty, it's really smoky. It's not like that, is it? No, it's, you'll see with the range that we're doing. Uh, most of the time, if you go west coast, that's when it's going to get a little bit on the smoky side. Mm -hmm. But the biggest difference between Irish whis whiskey and scotch whiskey is the introduction of peat. Okay. Now, it will vary from different regions, and the smokier ones will be more west coast. And, sorry, for those who don't know, what yes. is peat? Peat is actually, believe it or not, decaying vegetation. And okay. through hundreds of thousands of years, becomes almost like a fossil fuel. Okay. It's introduced into the drying process of the barley. They used to use um, opal furnaces in, in a kiln where they dry the, the barley. Mm -hmm. It's already been malted. And what they want to do is they, they want to add peat into it because the more the peat they add into the burn, the more smoke is produced. Okay. The more smoke that's produced, yeah. as you know, gets absorbed mm -hmm. into the drying barley. And that is then called a peated, uh, peated barley. It's also measured in phenol counts. So the higher the phenol. What counts? Phenols. We're going way over my head. Okay. <laughs> so, but basically, it's, it's, you're looking along the lines that the higher the number is, mm -hmm. the more smokier it's okay. going to be. Okay. So we're looking at uh, a Beaumore, you're looking probably around a 30. If you're looking at Lagavulin, it's about mm -hmm. a 35. You're yeah. looking at Ardbeg, it's about a 40. If you want to go deep, I mean really deep, <laughs> Brute Lottie's Octomore, yeah. 242 parts per million. Whew, that would be really, it would stay on your tongue for a while. Uh, you taste it tomorrow. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, well, let's get yes. tasting mm -hmm. because we're going to try it. We're going to pair up some food for you and that you can actually do at your cottage. And just want to let you know that these scotches are not crazy expensive, are they? No, I, one thing I like showing people is how you can get into scotch drinking for a reasonable amount of money. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go deep. So this one is the Akintosh and it's a Lowland whiskey. It's just out of Glasgow. Oh, sorry. Okay, take it. And take a nose and I'm interested because of your aspect because you're a chef and literally the way your mind works around flavor profiles mm -hmm. what would you try pairing with this particular scotch because you're gonna get light fruits out of this mm -hmm. you're gonna get vanillas you're gonna get a pears you're gonna get mm -hmm. that sort of idea it's triple distilled so what it does is allows the light flavors to really pop through on the mm -hmm. on the what is called the middle still to give you that flavor profile what do you what do you get I'm getting citrus 
Good. And then I get caramel, right? That caramel Toffees. finish. Yep. yep. Right. Yep. And I get a little bit of a little bit of heat from the alcohol, but not it's not overpowering by any stretch. No, it's a little bit of a spice in the back of the mm -hmm. throat, right? Mm -hmm. Almost mm -hmm. like it's uh, not cinnamony, but it's it's got that little bit of a spice kick in the back. What'd you think of that one? Oh, I love, I love that one. <laughs> Do you, do you I, need a moment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the, okay, yeah. for the second taste, yeah. now I got more of the smoky flavor at the back of my, yes. back of my throat. Okay, a little waft. Mm -hmm. little waft. At, at the end, but not right away. Like it didn't come across right away. It just kind of finished and out it went. Exactly. Now you have to remember whenever you drink anything, if you're drinking wines, you're drinking mm -hmm. spirits, you're drinking anything, uh, because I know you love your wines, mm -hmm. the first sip is going to program your palate. Okay. The second sip defines the flavor. Right. So we'll remember that anytime you... Okay, so then this one here, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, thinking pork tenderloin. Bacon wrap pork tenderloin? Ooh. No? Yeah. yeah. No, no, my ooze are good. Okay, good. <laughs> are good. So bacon wrap pork tenderloin, we're going to serve it with um, cauliflower that we're actually going to poach in cream and mascarpone cheese. Oh, that'd be and great. And a little bit of garlic, just yep. a little bit just to finish it. Right. And then um, we're going to actually use that sauce over top of the pork. Yeah, because you don't want to you you don't want to overtake the whiskey. No. Whiskey doesn't need to overtake your dish, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's the idea behind it. That's why I thought a little bit because I with a little bit of that last little bit of smoke, mm -hmm. I thought the bacon will go really well with that. Bacon goes great with everything. You're right. <laughs> okay. So the second one. Second one. This is actually what they call cardu. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, this is the one interesting fact about this. It's yeah. the very first distillery ever started by a woman. Wow. Yes. It actually opened up, and uh, they opened it up in about eight, 1811. Mm -hmm. uh, 1824 is when they got their license. So whenever you take a look, and you take a look at a whiskey, and it has an age on it, like a, mm -hmm. not an age, on um, age one, it says um, 1779 or 1824. That's when they got the license in order to produce. Okay. So they were probably producing before that, but <laughs> the king wanted yeah. his money. Yeah. So you're a distillery, you're producing, yeah. I'm the king, I come to you and say, chef, mm -hmm you have to pay me. Okay. Okay. So that's gotcha. basically what happens. But this is, Helen Cumming is the very first woman to ever run a distillery. She decorated it up like a bakery. Mm -hmm. I know you make great breads. Can mm -hmm. you imagine actually having a still in the back and people walk <laughs> in? And that's the idea behind it all. Okay. And then between her and her daughter-in-law, Elizabeth, they actually ran the distillery until 1893. And that's when they sold it to Johnny Walker's son, Alexander. Okay. And that's how it all started for Walker. Wow. Okay. Because it's so the first distillery ever did. This one's different. Right. I smell a little bit of honey. Oh, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. Wow. Sweet. Yes. Heathers. Yes. Honey. Yes. Uh, you're getting wonderful, wonderful, almost like a little bit of a toffee undertone mm -hmm. to it. Almost like a, sti like a sticky underneath. Yes, yeah, like a sticky toffee. Not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I know. So we're going to pair this up with, with a little bit of chocolate um, custard okay. and some fresh blueberries and raspberries. Ooh, I love the fruit. Okay. The fruit with this one is going to be dynamite yeah. with this. Do you think chocolate will overpower it? Chocolate's like bacon. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, it goes uh, with everything. Okay. You're not getting this one back. <laughs> this is really good. It is. And it's and surprising. Again, no smoky, no, no, you know? No, that's okay. the great thing about this whiskey. And I, and I have a lot of people who actually haven't tried it for a while and then they come back to it and they say, I just, I'm amazed on this flavor profile. It's so mm -hmm. great to come back to this type of whiskey. Oh, more toffee on the second one. Yeah, see, second yeah. sip, defines it. And I actually learned that from a friend of mine who was uh, Brian Van Flanders. He was the global ambassador for Don Julio Tequila. And he actually said to me, he said, look, you have to, you have to remember that when you taste something, First sip is going to program, second is going to define. Mm -hmm. There you okay. go. Next one? Bowl more. Okay, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. This is a big bolder one. This has actually got a little bit more flavor. Now, West Coast whiskeys knows this one is, this is where the peat comes into effect. The peat right in this one? Right away. Campfire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, and that's what we're the, at the cottage. Well, this is the perfect place I to know. do it. Okay. See? Now, I get okay. more. Like a medicine type, a little bit medicinal, mm -hmm. and then boom with the uh, the smoke. But get the sweetness out of this. Oh yeah, it's uh -huh. a, you get this almost like a sherry base undertone. Uh -huh. This full, almost steeped fruit. Not not that's as, good, not as jammy, good, no, but no, it's, no, it's, it's not. not as big as jammy, or it could get maybe along the lines of marmalade, maybe something along that. But this is the nice thing about this uh, this particular whiskey because it has 
It has that smoke, it has that oak, but then all of a sudden it has this wonderful sweetness yeah, undertone. And, and, and not harsh, but... No. Uh, like not hard, not harsh, no. No. Okay, we're gonna make a charcuterie board with this. We're, not, we're making, we're gonna oh, have the a whole smokiness bunch of uh, all this, and some rich cheeses. Right. Some hard cheeses, not soft cheeses. And I think this is gonna just, beautiful. Aged cheese? Aged cheese. Oh, good way to go. Okay. Good way, very defined flavor profile. Wow. Nice. Okay, I got some work to do. No kidding? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go do some cooking. You'll come back at the end of the show. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't mess it for the world. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Oh, quickly, yeah, one what? last thing. What? Water in scotch. Like some people, you know. Put oh, it, yeah, that's a really good point. Because I like putting loyal ice in my rum. Yep. Can you put water in scotch? Technically, um, the water you want to use, and this is the yeah. tough part. Okay, you use water, but you only use a drop of water. Mm -hmm. Because if you add too much water, it waters down the whiskey. Okay, there's an easy way to fix that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Add more whiskey. More whiskey. <laughs> okay, good, right. But it, ice cubes, a lot of people want to add ice cubes. And I add ice to my blended scotches. I don't yeah. add them to a, a single malt whiskey. Okay. Because ice, as you know, freezes. It pulls flavors yeah. in, right? Mm -hmm. So what you do is you literally freeze it. But if you want to put an ice cube in it because you like it a little bit opened up, which that's what water does, it's like walking outside after it rains. I mean, you can smell everything. You can mm -hmm. smell the grass, the trees, the asphalt, the dirt, the bark. So it'll amplify it. So let the ice melt. It chills it ever so slightly, mm -hmm. but it opens it up. So let the ice melt. So put your ice cube in there, yep. go wander away for a little bit. Come back to it and it'll be beautiful. Okay, perfect. No. I'll see you at the end of the show. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Come on! Yeah! So as Stuart was mentioning, um, we're going to be using, we're going to be pairing, I'm not even going to try it. I'm really not going to try it. And um, this is my favorite A scotch. And we're going to pair it with our uh, Nutrifarms pork tenderloin. So this is a pasture-raised pork tenderloin. Um, absolutely fantastic. Now, whenever you do pork tenderloin, there's always a silver skin on it. You can ask your butcher to take it off for you, or you can take it off yourself. So I'm just using a, a paring knife just to make a point that you can do it really easily like this. And then always when you uh, cut towards you, you always just want to lift it up. And then you see the silver skin right in front here. You're just going to take your knife underneath, just gently underneath, run it across to away from you. Last little piece towards you. And we're going to finish one more. You're going to see underneath. Take it all the way down. One more time. Just like so. And that's going to eliminate any of the harder bite that you don't want to have because this is a perfectly tender cut of meat. Just remember, it doesn't move in the animal, so it's very, very tender. Then we have some amazing Nutrifarms smoked bacon. And this is a naturally hardwood smoked, so it's going to pair really nicely. And also too, whenever you're looking for bacon, you want to make sure that is a hardwood, not just a smoked or not just um, a liquid smoke. You want the hardwood, you want the old school, and away we go. So we have four pieces here. We're going to take our pork tenderloin and take our four pieces of bacon, and we're just going to slowly roll it to together. Sometimes it's easier than other times. Just like so. And again, you just want, again, press a little bit firmer on the pork as we're rolling the bacon around. And there you have it. And then you sit, you sit it on the last fold so it doesn't come apart. And we're gonna take it, and with the magic of TV and, and my good friend Chef Kira coming over and helping me, uh, we have a bunch more already done for us. Now, we're gonna put it in a 375 convection oven, or if you don't wanna use the oven, you, you put it on the barbecue. If you're putting it on the barbecue, make sure you put it on the top grate and away you go. And you can put it in a beautiful oven safe pan just like what we have. If you're going to put it on the barbecue and not use a pan and the bacon the grease is going to drip down, you want to have something underneath so it doesn't flare up because you don't want that smell. You, you want it not to burn. You want it to be cooked nicely. And then don't forget, pork can be eaten medium. So 140, 145 if you want to go to 150. Buy yourself a meat thermometer. It's the best investment ever. And away we go. So we have our pork tenderloin in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take we have some amazing fresh Ontario cauliflower. We're gonna put it into our pot. And again, the great thing about this is it can be a rough chop. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because we're gonna puree it at the end or even mash it. We're gonna add a little bit of white wine to it. 
Tell me when. Oh, no, there's nobody here. <laughs> so about a cup if we're keeping track. I have some 10% cream. So we're going to add two cups of 10% cream. And then finally, about a cup and a bit or a cup and a quarter of 35% cream. I have clove of three garlic, sorry. I have three garlic cloves and we're going to actually put it in like so. A little bit of salt and pepper. We can give it a quick stir. Put our lid on. We're going to let it come up to a boil. And the great thing to remember, because we're using a higher fat content of um, cream, is that we can let it come up to a boil. If you want to cut the cream back and maybe use like a 2% or maybe a half and half, you want to make sure that you only bring it up to a medium. And it's going to take a little bit longer to cook the cauliflower, but you don't want it to go um, into a boil because the milk and cream will split. And again, as we mentioned earlier, you don't, it, it's not a good thing. So I'm just going to grab some mascarpone cheese. And it's funny because our hosts were asking us yesterday, like, chef, what's your favorite ingredient? And, you know, butter definitely comes to mind. Bacon would be maybe a close second. But this here is truly my favorite ingredient. It's mascarpone cheese and it's Italian cream cheese if you're thinking kind of that way, but it doesn't have the tang that you have with cream cheese. It just is, it's pretty much heaven on earth. And um, it's a, again, a higher fat content. So you can put it into a dish like this that's really hot. It's not gonna separate on you. We'll put it in just a couple minutes as it comes up to a boil and you're gonna taste some amazing it just adds that touch of richness to it. And the great thing, because it is a richer ingredient, when you're making, let's say, a butternut squash soup or a mushroom soup or, you know, cauliflower soup, wherever you want to go with it, even tomato soup, you add a tablespoon of this and it just makes it magic. So again, keeping that in mind and away we go. So we're going to add that in just a couple minutes. In the oven now, just so you know, I put in some green beans and yellow beans. We're going to roast them off with the pork and they're going to get a little bit of the smokiness from the bacon and they will be absolutely amazing. Um, it's a, not the newest trend, but one of the newer trends in dining and it's absolutely fantastic because some restaurants out there are making their own um, meats and pâtés and pressed meats and love it, absolutely love it. And so I thought my good friends at Pillars do a lot of dry aged and cured meats. So I'm thinking, why don't we bring them on board and we're going to um, use some of their products. And this one product here, the Sujeri, um sausage, a summer sausage, is actually the first summer sausage that Mr. Huber, who started Pillars, started making here. He had to get permission from the Austri Austrian government to use that name so that he can actually make the sausage. So this is their oldest aged sausage, 
and it's absolutely fantastic. And after it comes out of the plastic, there's um, a cloth skin to it. And then you have this amazing summer sausage right here that is, because it's been aged a little bit longer and not smoked, has a more cured flavor to it. It's fantastic. Highly, highly recommend it. And, you know, bring it up to the cottage, share it with your friends. I find a, a really nice charcuterie board. And as you all know, I have this big six-foot charcuterie board. It's just being used right now. I couldn't steal it away. So, uh, yeah, bigger the better. And because this is a great sharing. And if it's really hot in, in, in the cottage, you can make this and kind of pick away at it. And it's fantastic. And you're not having the ovens on. You're not having the stove on. So then the other one um, product that I have, I have a turkey kielbasa. Again, has a little bit of pepper to it. Um, nice flavor. It's going to pair really nicely with the scotch. So we're going to put this on here. Like so. And again, because it's a sharing plate, it doesn't have to, you know, be perfectly placed. It just has to look, okay, lack of better words, pretty. It just, I mean, if it looks pretty, you're good to go. Then I have some smoked prosciutto or Westphalian ham. And we're going to put the Westphalian ham here. And the other thing that you can do, and you can take, you know, a piece, of, we have some maple cheddar here. You can just take the maple cheddar, wrap it around the prosciutto, place the prosciutto on, and you're good to go. And we're going to do a couple more of these. And it just tastes great. And the other thing that if you want to do, you can always get some goat's cheese or chev, and you put that on a strawberry, wrap the prosciutto around the strawberry. It really doesn't get much better than that. So we'll do one more of these. Like, just like so. Then I have some salsa cheddar. And again, you can use as much or as little. I always have to quality control it. And put that on. We have some chev, which is soft ghost cheese. Put that over here. I have some servalot salami. Again, this is now smoked salami. So we'll move it over. We'll place it on here. And you have some different heat levels. This also has a little bit of heat to it. This has a little bit and more, and you can get some peppercorn salamis. You can put some pancetta on. You can go wherever you want to go with it. We have some chipotle cheddar log here. Here it goes. We have some maple cheddar from our good friends at Black River. And this is fantastic. And actually, they incorporate the real maple syrup into this. It's mmm. -hmm. And then you can put some olives on. And you have a simple, easy charcuterie board. But, you know, this one's OK. It's OK. I think we should do the big reveal. Made this with my fr friend, Chef Kira. And look at this. Just beautiful, nice and big. It's inviting for sharing. We'll be able to share it and drink some amazing scotch with it. And away we go. Well, we're back. I brought Stuart back on because I'm going to start actually um, giving you some food to taste with the scotch. So I'm just going to quickly puree up my cauliflower here. And I've put the mascarpone cheese in. And this takes about a minute and a half to just to do. And it doesn't have to be all pureed perfect. But it smells amazing. And just give you a reveal in just a second. Just so you can see. Again, just some, again, some nice pieces in there. But it smells amazing. Ooh. I'm going to reach in and grab our pork. Are you ready to try some, sir? <laughs> Beyond ready. Again, nice and medium. And put that on the plate. A little bit of our bacon. 
And of course, whenever you do something on TV, sometimes it just doesn't always cooperate. So, you know, don't worry about your bacon falling off. You can just put a piece on, invite your guests back in a minute, just kind of make it work and it works perfect for you. The secrets of it. In I remember one time Julia Child always said, that's why you should always have, you know, in her accent, yeah. um, you know, the kitchen behind. <laughs> so. Stir it, there oh you go, my. try that. I, I have a little piece of bread. Good. Now, do you remember which scotch we said we were going to pair with this? Uh, that one. The A scotch. <laughs> the A scotch. Go, work with me there. Ock. Ock. In. In. Toshin. Toshin. Ock and Toshin. Ock and Toshin. Good. Okay, you try that. Okay. There's a fork right here oh, for thank you. you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And I got a little bread. Now, we made the sourdough bread uh, a couple of days ago at another cottage when we were there. Again, just kind of giving it that extra day to uh, give you. Okay, enough. sure. <laughs> 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 just giving it that extra day of um, marinating and all that great flavor. Sorry, not marinating. Uh, giving it an extra day of um, letting it ferment. So it gives it a much more sourdough flavor. What do you think? Is that okay? It's mine. Okay. <laughs> mine. <laughs> now we're going to take the charcuterie board. Oh. I'm not done here. I like that. This is okay. amazing. Mm. Wow. Take that and you can take any meat, but this is the bull more. That was a smoking one you did. There. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So I want you to try actually this sausage that Willie um, Huber Sr. did. Okay. And try that and try it with it. Try it with the... Oh my. That was so not work well. <laughs> <laughs> did you surprise yourself? I did. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Nice combination, man. That friend. is a really That's a great combination. And I think all the others are going to go down the line and work really mm -hmm. nicely with you. Mm -hmm. And then finally, what I've done is I've made a little bit of chocolate custard. Stir this in just like so. Mm -hmm. And this is a dark chocolate custard. So um, the only sugar I put in was like a tablespoon of maple syrup. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I have uh, some fresh blueberries, some fresh raspberries. You make it look so nice. I, every time I try doing that on a plate, it looks like a mess. That looks great. And then we're going to, my new favorite. <laughs> Cardu. Cardu. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Spoon. Awesome. I gotta try this too. Oh, you have to. Chocolate, the honey, mm -hmm. the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That works. That is a that's an amazing dish. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> hey brother, I just want to say thank you so much because as I mentioned to you earlier, I've been dying to have you on the show and actually talk some amazing scotches and pair up some great food with you. Hey, thank we'll you. See you soon, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, till next time, I'm Chef D. I might show up at your cottage. <laughs>